Howdy doodles all, and welcome to Dive to the Titanic. I've had this game on my Steam wish list for quite some time, but uh, initially it was quite pricey, bearing in mind the number of negative reviews the game had got. However, with a recent price reduction and the current Steam sale, I figured it was worth having a little investigate to see if those negative reviews are fully justified. So, let's go down together and get our feet wet on the Titanic. We'll start with day two, I think, because uh, day one is just an introductory type level. Not particularly exciting. More of a tutorial type thing than anything. So, here we are. Yeehaw! Here we go! First up, this game is very dialogue heavy with our little chap there on the radio. So, you begin off, you're in your submersible. And, uh, let's have a quick look. We can deploy our camera. Once you've disconnected the camera system... In this one you can control the, the submarine you and your camera. You can also control, control the camera. Another screen, function is the as well as its light intensity. Great! That works. So let's dive back into the submarine. We also have an external camera. Let's start with the radio. Let's uh, get Remember that the direct. Now, the first thing to notice is the controls. Now, they work in a bit of an odd way. To put, you have first to put an engine into a direction, either forward or back. So, if you want to go in reverse, then you can now accelerate up or down. And then to go forward, you have to press the forward gear button and then forward gear again to go into forward. A bit frustrating. I mean it does feel quite effective like you're controlling a submersible at 3,800 meters or so. Obviously uh, you can't expect it to be zipping along. It is a submarine. Also a slightly annoying, the game does have a controller sensitivity in its in-game options. However, I have a wired Xbox controller and I could not get it to see the analog sticks. The buttons were fine, the buttons registered. I could assign them, but not the analog sticks. And later on in the game you'll have uh, arms and claw arms to control. The legendary crow's nest. So you'll probably want to play this on keyboard, to be honest with you. It's uh, Seems more preferable. Through the course of history, various stories have been told regarding this. Oh, I'll keep trying to. Luckily, as I say, you can silence him up just by pressing the left mouse button. So, we should be. And there's another slight annoyance. As you can see where your viewport is, your submarine itself is hangs quite a bit below you. So you'll find yourself crashing relatively often. And your sub can only take so much damage and crashes before your game is over. According to my display, you've reached the radio room. What we have to do now is to find the sign with Titanic's calling signal, MGY. In case you're interested, there are loads I can tell you about the radio room. Just press the I key and I'll get going. Luckily, some of the dialogue is player controlled. If you get the option there, you can let him babble on if you like that sort of thing. Okay, so first of all, let's get our camera out and then get control of it. I mean, certainly on the graphics front, I mean, these aren't very high res graphics, but they're very effective. The, uh, all the particles flying around in the water. And certainly on, on the atmosphere front alone, this is good. I mean, I would imagine most of us are never going to actually get to dive on the real Titanic. And as far as I'm aware, there's no other game out there quite at the moment offering this, this angle, this perspective. Although there are a few escaped Titanic style games, obviously we have Titanic Honor and Glory coming soon. There's a Fall of the Titanic available. Right, so as you can see, there's what we need to look at. Let's get it uh, 
and then P to take a photo. Exactly, yeah. that's it. One can see it quite clearly. M G Y. Crazy. That was the calling signal assigned to the Titanic. All right, now we have to find the cabin of Captain Smith. Let's see which way we have to go. Uh... Now here we'll Forwards. show one of the next problems with this game. Now I've always had a bit of an interest in the Titanic story. And so I do have a rough idea of the layout of the ship. Turn to the west. See, now if you used to try and turn to the west there, when he told you, you would end up going back into the room you've just come out of. And there's a few more moments like that coming up that we should look at. Turn west. See, again, if we was to turn west now into that corridor there, that corridor was actually blocked. No, it's uh, one of the problems you because it's a direct bearing from where you are to where you want to go. But you might still have to navigate your way around obstacles on the way. Now, as I say, I'm fairly confident with the Titanic layout, so I'm not... And even I, well, to be honest, even I occasionally get disorientated with it. So I can understand someone who's new to this would be... This bit could be quite frustrating. Especially as you can see on the right there you have oxygen and battery levels. Turn south. So you're actually on a time limit as well. As I said, you earn money through taking pictures and recovering stuff so you can upgrade your sub as the game progresses to give you more time. But it's a slightly a bit further from the boat deck, the distress rock. It's a slightly right. annoying. See here, right. No, we do not want to go right. You want to just literally go straight down here. Going right here will take you back out to the other side of the ship. Further to the right. No, it's, it's not at all further to the right. It's there. That is where we want to go. That doorway. So I can understand why people new to this game would find this a very frustrating to uh, at places like this. Again, what we're after is just in here. <laughs> there we go, our next one. We have to take a dive to the A deck now. Be careful though, and remember the range. If we lose the camera system, it's over. Our target on the A deck is Edith Louise Rosenbaum's cabin, number 11. Once we're there, we'll take a picture of her desk, which could still contain documents of her Paris coverage. Since she locked everything before she left the cabin, we'll probably never get to the content of the desk. Okay now, let's go to cabin A11. So obviously, A11. We to go south. We, see here, we need to go down a deck first. In fact, it's roughly right below us. If you was to go south there, where it was telling us when we came out, you'd have ended up... You have to go east. You still have to go down yet. I'd say, pace-wise, obviously, as you are on a submarine, it, it's not a fast game. Forwards! So from the point of view of an experience, the atmosphere, it is pretty awesome. I've got to give it credit there. Right, it's that one there. Further to the right. And there's our target. As I said, you'll notice you cannot yet take a picture. You only have six shots to take. Great job! You see the desk? If so, take a picture. Further information is always by pressing I. This is pretty fascinating. Hard to put it into words. Well, we should have the three pictures by now. We'll back the camera system to the Nevron, reconnect it, and then quickly back up. I hope that we'll make a lot of profit at the auction. We should definitely equip our camera system with a stronger radio module, allowing us to advance further into the Titanic. 
and we should definitely get one of those claws with which we can retrieve smaller items. So from this point, I mean, this bit is brilliant. The actual atmosphere of being here on the wreck Titanic. I don't know how much of the Titanic is modelled, whether it's just the bow section or there's a stern section as well. And I would hope that as the game gets completed, there's a free roam mode. However, that isn't exactly clear on the store page. Because as you can see, as a game, it has some issues. The fascination with the Titanic prevailed at the beginning of the 60s, finding the Titanic threatened to become a national sport. And American physicists wanted to search the bottom of the ocean with the net of TV cameras. Today's level of knowledge still sounds a bit absurd, but people were trying to figure things out. Another person planned to wrap it. Yes, sir. It's fine. again. Yes, as I was saying, you get six shots on the camera, but I've seen nothing here on the interface to let you know which, how many shots you have remaining. And as I'll show you just in a minute, you're only allowed certain camera spots. Now here, on the telemotor. There's a hot spot here. So I could take a photo here and it would be wasted. Yet a few moments later, same shot remember, and now it's, now it's fine. And again an irritating little game restriction that doesn't really add to the uh, experience. There's also another hot spot on, back down on the crow's nest if you want to make your maximum money for upgrading your sub, but for the sake of this uh, little mini review we'll, we'll get heading off so we can see the last part of the game. So yes, it's, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. As far as it being a directly a, a game going, it can be frustrating. As far as the experience of actually looking around the sunken Titanic wreck, they've done an excellent job, absolutely brilliant. The audio fits nicely as you can hear. The visuals are, although not exactly high state of the art graphics, do a brilliant job of conveying the wreckage. And the, you know, the fact you've got no light at 3,791 meters. I mean, if there is a free roam mode, I will play this through to the end. If there is a free roam mode, I shall mention that in the comments section below so people people can find out about it. And there we go, we can now get back to the sub. And off we go. See there, looks absolutely fantastic, very atmospheric. You don't have to go all the way up, you just have to surface a little bit and it will... It will take us to the next part of the game automatically. You know, it's certainly... It's certainly not a bad looking game. So here we go, this is the where we get the fruits of our labour. We bang everything on eBay basically. And with the money we earn here, we can then upgrade our sub. Again, I'm not sure why you even have this though, to be honest with you. It's all random number generated. You have no interaction here, you just sit and let it do this. Which your photographs. And then we can get to the shop to buy the uh, upgrades. But they could have easily just have said, oh, you was given this much money as a reward for your dives and your photographs, and took us straight to the shop. It's nice to have made the effort to try and make it a more immersive experience, I guess. But it's unfortunately one that just doesn't really add anything to the experience itself. 
especially this pounding track. Like they're being pursued by a gigantic shark on the Titanic or something. And all we're doing is selling a few photographs. Loads of Wonga. Drinks are on me, chums. As far as I know, if you just take the, the basic free photographs, you'll have enough to progress in the game. This will just give us a little bit of extra to play with. So, this is the final part of the game. So at the moment you do have to buy these next two to progress. You don't get a choice in the matter. And anything left over you can now upgrade your sub. Or your cab. Well yeah, there's some to upgrade the cabs, uh, the sub, some to upgrade the camera. I won't mind the extended battery to spend more time on site, but yeah. So that about sums up this quick look. So it really depends. It, it does justify some of the negative reviews on Steam, undoubtedly. The uh, slightly wacky, First the slightly wacky direction system, the sometimes cumbersome controls. So it depends. If you do have a strong interest in underwater exploration or the Titanic story. There's definitely enough in here from the effort they've put in. I say hopefully there might be a free roam mode at the end of the game, which would make it a definite no-brainer. As far as the game itself goes, if you don't have an interest in the Titanic, uh, or any sort of underwater exploration, then you're probably going to want to give this a miss. It is very slow-paced. Um, a lot of it, like those as I said, the shop and the, and the uh, eBay section, not really adding a lot to the, to the game itself. But overall, for its current price, compared to what it was, I've enjoyed it enough to say I've got my money's worth. So anyway, gang, I think we'll conclude our look here. So don't forget, if you found the video useful in any way, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know you're alive. Thanks for watching. Bye now.